Uh, welcome to example 17 in our matrices topic. We've been looking at matrices associated with transformations like reflections and rotations. If you haven't seen these, I would suggest you go back and check out kind of examples 13, 14, 15. So I'm going to assume that you know a little bit about that. This is about compound transformations. In other words, what happens when we apply more than one transformation to a particular point or set of points? Could we come up with one overall master matrix which has all of those different transformations built into it? The answer is yes, we can. And the important thing is that when, we are when we're applying more than one transformation to get the compound transformation, we have to apply it in what I would call reverse order. In other words, we start with the last um, transformation and we multiply it by the, the next last and then the last one to multiply is effectively the first transformation. So let's see what that means in reality. Um, here's example 17. Find the matrix associated with a transformation involving a reflection in the x-axis and then an anti-clockwise rotation of pi over 6 radians about the origin. So we've got two different transformations going on and we're going to put them together. So, let's have a look at the first thing. Let's look at the reflection matrix. So, I'm just going to write down reflection. Um, and what we're going to do is think about that. I'm going to call this M1. So, it's a square matrix. What is the matrix associated with a reflection in the x-axis? Well, as I said in my previous tutorials, you could memorize it and just write it down, or you could try and work it out uh, each demo just to be sure. So we're looking for a reflection in the x-axis. That means that it's the y-coordinate that needs to be negative. So in order to do, if I do 1, 0, that will keep the x-coordinate the same. And if I make that 0, negative 1, that will make the y-coordinate negative. So that's my matrix associated with a reflection in the x-axis, and then I want a rotation around the origin. And for that, there are some that you could memorize, like half-turn rotations, but most of the time, if it's a, another rotation, you're going to introduce the, the general formula. I'm calling this M2. So the general kind of formula is cos theta. I don't know why I put that bracket in. Um, because it's going to take me more time, more space. Cos theta and negative sine theta, and then positive sine theta, and then cos theta. That's my four elements of the matrix. And of course, in this case, we're using anti-clockwise of pi over 6. Anti-clockwise is the positive direction uh, of angle travel in our normal kind of trig a quadrant diagram kind of uh, situation. So it's positive, which means that we're going to use the positive angle of pi over 6. And we just substitute that in each case. And we've got positive sine pi over 6 and cos pi by 6. Oops. And that gives me cos pi over 6, cos 30 degrees is root 3 over 2. Negative sine, sine of pi over 6 is a half, so that becomes negative a half. The sine of pi over 6 is positive a half, and then we've got cos pi over 6 is root 3 over 2 again. Okay, so that's our second matrix. I might take a common factor of a half out of that just to make it um, easier, but I'm not going to just now. So what we want is actually the compound matrix or the combined matrix okay so we're looking for the compound uh, or complete transformation so i'm going to call this m now this is the important bit i mentioned up about reverse order so you might think well let's put m1 if we're going to multiply the matrices together you might think well let's do m1 times m2 because it's the first reflection multiplied by the second rotation and so on but the really important thing is that when you are combining uh, the transformations, we do it in reverse order. So the last uh, transformation goes first, so that's M2. 
multiplied by the next last, which is only R2 in this case, but if there were three, it would be M3 multiplied by M2 multiplied by M1. So, so just make sure you get the order of them right, because as we know, when we multiply matrices, the order is absolutely crucial. So M2 is this one here. Um, and you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to actually write that as a half as a common factor. And it's going to give me root 3, negative 1, 1, and root 3. See what I did there? Uh, I've just taken out a half as a common factor of all of the elements. M1 is 1, 0, 0, negative 1. And I'm going to keep a half out there. And I'm going to multiply those two matrices together. So root 3 times 1 is root 3 plus negative 1 times 0 is 0, so that gives me root 3. The second uh, element here, uh, root 3 times 0 is 0, plus negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. And down in the bottom row, 1 times 1 is 1, and in the other term, 0. And then here, I've got negative root 3. So here we have a matrix which is the combination of those two operation. So if I apply the matrix M to any point, it will reflect it on the x-axis and then rotate it by pi over 6 radians about the origin. There we go. I hope that's helpful. Just remember, uh, work them all out separately and then multiply them in reverse order.